Camera's rolling. Uh, audio second you rolling. Let's fucking do this, dude. Yeah, man. It is episode 71 of From Everyone. I'm here today learning from Kanan. Is it Billadeo? It's Billadou. Billadou. It's, it's French, French. Kanan Bill, Kanan Billadou. Yes. Hell yes, dude. dude. All right. Thanks for coming through. Yeah. Uh, I know we got a couple shows coming up here. I'm going to pull my little cheat sheet out. Uh, so 7, July 6th in Allentown, Pennsylvania, July 27th in Gloucester, Rhode Island, and August 10th in Worcester, Massachusetts. So if you're yep. living in those areas, go support Canaan, go support Bearing Point. Um, yeah, I think guess will be out after the Pennsylvania show, but whatever. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, those are going to be, uh, hopefully, you know, those look like they're going to be a pretty pretty sick show. So yes. It's, I'm hoping to make it out to that uh, Worcester show. That yeah. lineup looks so insane. I just saw Alter of Next got added to that. Like yep. That lineup just keeps getting better. Keeps yep. So more I've, nev- I've never been to that. Was it the P&I club something or something like that? Like yeah, that? I've, that I've never been there. Every time I've ever been to Worcester, it's always been, it's been the, you know, the Palladium. Yep. That's the only time I've The only place to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's either that, you just drive by the fucking polar bear. Yeah. There you, there you are. You're at you're yeah, Worcester, yeah, yeah. so. I saw the uh, your Palladium show has been nuts. That Oceano was it open for them? Yeah, that was uh, fucking stupid crazy. It, yeah, it looks I, nuts. <laughs> yeah, those photos just went so hard. Yeah, so basically that was a last minute show. Um, that was actually because we were talking to Justin Leach about another. We were talking to Justin Leach about another show, mm-hmm. and since we're all old as shit, um, <laughs> we took forever to get back to him and. It wasn't even that long. Maybe it was like three days, but it's like, oh, you got work. Oh, uh, were you working mm-hmm. late that day? Oh, can you know? Can someone watch you? Uh, with John? It's like, uh, can someone watch the kids? Like, is mm-hmm. that all that stuff taken care of? And then like we we got back to him like, like three days later, and uh, we were like, yeah, we could play it. And he was like, oh shit, you know, uh, it already filled. And he was like, oh, but hold on a second, I got something else coming up. And he was like, how do you? How would you guys like to play with Oceano? I was like, better than the fun, <laughs> the fucking first show you asked us. You should have just asked us that one from the beginning. <laughs> what a happy accident! Yeah, I, I, we would have said yes anyway. We would have figured it out, of course. Yeah, because yeah. we just we're all you know from that that age where like Oceano, like when they released that that mm-hmm. album, that was that was it. When they released Depths, it was like that was everybody's personality for like yeah. six months, and so that was. Is uh, that like high school when that came out for you? Oh man, that was. Yeah, it was definitely high school. It was 20, or no, it was 2000. I want to say eight. It's a guess. Mm -hmm. Could be wrong, but. Sure. I I remember looking back at like being in high school and everyone says like, what you're listening to in high school is what you're going to listen to for the rest of your life. And being like, there's no way that I stick with this music for my whole life. And here I am. (laughs) I'm I'm fucking, I'm weird when it comes to music. So like it's, I don't, so I've always played like death core, Mm -hmm. I guess uh, you, you call it, but I've never really listen to deathcore like that interesting okay i'm like a fuck i'm a norma jean stan i Hell fucking yeah. love norma jean like <laughs> yes. old norma jean new norma jean love it so it's just there's there's depth to that type of music to me that a lot of the times like with like with like deathcore and stuff it's like doo, 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 doo. you know it's just yeah it's just chugs How and heaviness heavy can and, we get? Yeah. and don't get me wrong i love that it, yeah that's just, it's just a completely different type of love for me for that that stuff that i find like when i'm working on music there's some like i assume you're mostly producing death core and stuff that is along the lines of it so then there, to me there's some version of like i need to listen to something that i'm not working on like it's just even if what i'm working on is yeah. my favorite thing even like for me i'm like a rise core kid so like that oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. warp yeah. tour rise core that singing and screaming balance is to me the, the oh, yeah. mecca of music oh, sleeping with sirens and stuff like that all that all dog that, shit yes uh, it's not <laughs> not dog shit that what was that that first what album was it with uh I can't think of it because I, I never really was into that music, mm-hmm. but it was like that first big, that first big <laughs> album they had blew up. That's the whipped cream on my music. Taste. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's like he sings like that, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, but it, it, a lot of that stuff is awesome. It's produced really well, and it, it it's it's really good music. So that is just, absolutely my home. But I found that what I listen to now is a lot of like shitty SoundCloud rap of like I just need yeah. like a different flavor in my ears. And I assume it's a similar thing for you. Of like, yeah, if you're doing Burying Point all day, like you just need something that isn't Burying Point I, in your brain. Yeah, I night. can't. I I just I don't listen to the type of music we play, and it, I think it actually helps the music we play because I actually just had this conversation like a week ago with uh, our drummer where we were talking about like we have like this heavier new thing that we're writing in. And a lot of the times it's like I pull inst- inspiration from like a lot of different types of music. And one of the last things we were talking about was Deftones. And he doesn't like, he doesn't, he doesn't listen to Deftones. He was like, oh, I've tried it so many times. Mm-hmm. I can't get into Deftones. And I was like, but it's some, a lot of that stuff is so transferable to what we do that yep. it's sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta branch out and do what, do what works. So I think it's also important to like cross pollinate our interests where I think that like, 
we're never going to be a better Oceano than Oceano was, right? Exactly. Like the way to upgrade that is to take whatever your unique recipe of yeah. interest is. If you're how to curate that into one sound. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's, sometimes it works. And then sometimes it's, you know, it's bouncing ideas back and forth for weeks before you're like, all yeah. right, now we have two riffs. And then sometimes you just sit down with, with the other guitars. Like me and John will sometimes sit down and it's like, oh, there's a song. It's done in like, you know, 45 minutes. We're like, what the fuck was that? And, yeah. <laughs> then, and that was, it, you know, and that's a lot of the times that stuff ends up coming out pretty good where it's yep. you kind of you're starting to vibe off of each other. So I understand. I, I get what he likes doing. So I, I can like set him up for things like when I when I write. So that, that's a lot of that stuff is pretty good, too. So I find myself trying to be like very intentional about what I consume because I'm aware that whatever I listen to, whatever I hear is going to come back out of me. So I try and like make a good effort to like listen to things that I want to come back out of me or watch things that I want to yep. visually create. Are you aware of that at all? As you're, yeah, are you producing bands, you're writing your own music? Like, are you aware of trying to take in good things so good things come out of you of like eating, listening to your vegetables, so to speak? Yeah. So there's, it's, it's weird. Cause like when you're, when you're like listening to music, it's more of like, uh, you'll get like certain feelings for certain things. So like, what I was talking before with like the Deftones was it's the song uh, Risk where it's like they do the same rhythm for fucking two minutes. Interesting. I actually talked to them because it was it was two minutes and ten seconds. They did it for two minutes and ten seconds, and they do they just it's like dun 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 dun, dun. and then they do that for fucking two minutes. It's like boring as shit, but the vocals kind of keep it moving, mm -hmm. and then they slowly start getting heavier, and then they just hit the first fret once. They go dun 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 dun. But like the way it comes in and the way that it was executed, mm -hmm. it makes it sound way more than just that. So like that's yeah. like the kind of stuff that I like to gravitate towards because it's more or less how you do things than like than exactly like what you're playing sometimes is, is more important. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point that, yeah, the structure of the thing. I heard uh, Knocked Loose, uh, Brian Garris, their vocalist, describing that all songs are just like build the tension and then release the tension. Yep. Uh, and he was using that to say how like EDM is the same thing as metal, where it's just the whole thing is build tension for as long as you can hold people's interest and then hit them with a drop and then this whole thing goes wild. And it's yep. been like a really interesting like universal song structure that i've started to pick up on it's like oh that's movies that's every yeah, that's form everything. of entertainment is yep. build tension and then release tension yeah so and in the deftones example it's like yeah by doing the same thing for two minutes you build it, an insane it, amount it, of tension it, and that's and that's i don't know how much you've listened to deftones i know some people that like deftones for so, long i've gotten deftones. into loathe a ton and i know that loathe is like the new version of deftones but somehow i just haven't quite made it back yeah. to deftones themselves I was just—I I recently posted about that. Maybe not recently. Maybe it was like two months ago where I sure. went through that because I waited so long to listen listen to Loathe, yep. and I fucked up because when it came <laughs> out, that was that was awesome. It was like that album was uh, what was it? I let everything in. Yeah, that one was if you it was like that album that Deftones never released after like Saturday Night Wrists. Interesting. And, and in between like Diamond Eyes and Saturday Night that that. They could have wrote that and put it there, like mm -hmm. as they were like progressing as a band. It's, I'll have to get back to the Deftones. Yeah, somehow it's one of those boats that I've missed of just yeah, yeah. yeah somehow never quite got into the discography of it all. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, I'm the same way with Sleep Token. Of like everyone loved them, and it just took me a year and a half to yeah. go like, oh, this is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, no, that's uh, when they came, when Sleep uh, Sleep Token first came out. It was uh, it was like it was like a, it was more of a vibe where it was, it was the same thing with uh, what was that? Oh. Band that came out where it was like it's the uh she was in I wrestled the bear once and now oh yeah it, it, spirit box spirit box yes. spirit box so spirit box was the same thing for me where it was like mm -hmm. it came out and I was like damn this is awesome and then I, it's it might sound dumb but then when everybody was on the train I was like this the, it's I, I'm not on the train anymore mm -hmm. sorry but that is exactly I how I'm wired I think yeah. I listened to it too much that it was just by the time that it kind of blew up I was already kind of I was over it already you know yes. So. There is something weird, and I guess uh, I have, I'm wired the same way. Of like when something is too popular, I almost don't want to hear it. And it's not that yep. I like don't want to be with the in crowd. It's that like there is so much positivity around it that nothing I hear will be as positive as the feedback is. Yeah. Where it's like I'm destined to fail. I'm destined to be disappointed because I'm expecting a euphoria that it isn't real. It doesn't exist. It's like yeah. the yeah internet's conglomerated emotion. Yeah, and it's like yeah, it's good, but everyone's like, oh, this is the best fucking thing I've heard in my life. And I'm like, yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, yeah, I, I felt the same way like a month ago. It's, yeah. But it is what it is. But it's just, I think it's just when you first hear something for the first time, nothing will ever sound like that first time you hear it. Yes. And 
after that you listen to it you know 20 times it's like that's the song yeah yep. and it almost makes me wonder if like we are in the sweet spot of music where i look at the bands that have gotten to that that stratus or left the stratosphere of the bad omens of the world where it's like yep. I wonder if it's more fun to be where we are now, where we can still impress people, where my sense is like when you get to that tier of music, it's almost impossible to impress anyone because what they're expecting of you is so much higher yeah. than, yeah, they're expecting how you made them feel two years ago. And that is like a, a time and a place in their life that you can't replicate. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can try to pump out the same stuff or be like, oh, let's use this uh, formula that worked with this and mm -hmm. just just regurgitate that for fucking 10 years. You can yeah. try that, but it's not going to be the same. It, it, it's never the same. And it's this bizarre thing where if you audible, then you're a sellout, but if you stay the course, then you're boring and doing yeah, the same thing over exactly. again. You, just, just, you, yeah, don't, lose, you don't lose. win. It's, it's what, what it is is you have to, you know, a lot of it has to do with luck where it's <laughs> like, you know, sometimes when you're just like writing music, it's, you just you trip into something and you're yeah. like, this is awesome. 45 you know? minute song that you and John wrote. Yeah. 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 Not even a 45 minute song, but we wrote a song in 45 minutes where it's like, yeah, you, Oh yeah. My yeah. Bad. Those are two very different things. 45 yeah. minute song. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's like that. It's just, sometimes you just riff back and forth and everything just works together. I know, uh, a lot of people are like our most popular song with people is, is violent justice. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, it's the end, that's the end bit. And it's just like, uh, so a lot of people in in our band don't like hardcore music. Interesting. Now I'm a huge Trapped Under Ice fan. Okay. I'm, just, I'm yeah. a Trapped Under Ice stan. Like yep. it's just it it's just it hits different for me. So yeah, I incorporated like a like a kind of like a like a hardcore riff towards the end of that song, and that's what that 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 riff is. And at first, I, I remember I was talking to John. John was like, I don't like it. I was like, I was like. Dude, you're just gonna have to trust me on this. You're gonna have to just trust me. This is when we first started writing all together mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's we're still kind of figuring each other out. And I was like, you're just gonna. It, it, that's what it is. He had to trust that people were gonna love that shit, and 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 they did. And I trusted him for a lot of. He, he's really good at like writing like trim pick riffs and like rhythms like that. And mm -hmm. so we 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 do what we can together and it, we just try to get the best out of both of us. How yeah. are y'all two the main songwriters in Bearing Point? Like yeah. what is a how does a normal song come together in the Bearing Point world? Um a normal song? So it's the first song we ever had together was Ready for War. I wrote that by myself before the band even existed. Okay. It is dog shit. I fucking <laughs> hate it now. I fucking hate it so much and it's <laughs> the end of it is so annoying to me because it takes forever and it was just something that i was like oh i wrote the song forever ago let's just jam this to you know just so we have something to jam because we don't we've never written anything together yet let's mm -hmm. just do this and so i taught him that and then oh man that's the first <laughs> song we're gonna throw out that's I, I guarantee you the second we get over like 30 minutes set it's gone it's it'll be it'll gone forever and uh do you feel like you would piss people off with that, or do you feel like everyone? Oh, I don't care. Okay, that's gotta be for you. That is the right I answer. I don't care because that is the right answer. Yeah, it's also at the same time. It's when you're like feeding off of the energy from the crowd, and then you're like, you have this weird offbeat like ending breakdown that like you just want it to be over, and it mm -hmm. just it it lasts for like thirty five seconds. It's a mood killer. It, it's a mood killer. For Where me is it set. in your set list? Oh man, I mean, we kind of like. Do you try and bury it in the middle? Do you get out of the way? It's first? buried in the middle. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the thing: is like ready for war. The first half is I like it a lot, and mm -hmm. then it's like too bad I wrote that you know forever ago because it's trash. I, I don't, Interesting. It's gone. I love the first half of it. I wrote like a pretty good amount of riffs in the beginning, and like, is there pretty, any like room to like remix the ending to rewrite that ending part? That you don't. I like? was thinking that too, but it's like at this point, it's like it was like three years ago. If sure. we were gonna do it, we probably should have done it by now, but. We, we like want to live. move on to new stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Even like it's live, that would be a fun little flavor, little change of pace yeah, for maybe. everyone who's expecting. Yeah. yeah, expecting what they've heard, and all of a sudden you come out with the new 2024 <laughs> version of yeah, it. Yeah, 2024, ready for war. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it. To it. Yeah, we'll we'll drop it for the uh, the presidential election. We'll, we'll wait for that. And then, <laughs> Yo, shout out straight. the debate. Yeah, shout out the debate. Just I I saw I, I didn't watch any of it, not one second. I yeah. turned on my TV. And then, like, on HBO Max, it was, like, live currently. And I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> I ended up watching some dumb History Channel thing about, yep. like, did Hitler escape to Argentina? I was like, yeah. I'd rather watch that. Yeah. Some crazy shit than, than that. I was like, that's – I'm good on that. It's, yes. 
Yeah. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. And I feel like politics is probably not the best <laughs> topic to dive into here on the public forum. Uh, I'm curious, yeah, about how the songs come together and like just the, the process of it all. Cause I think everyone has such a unique process of it. And you have the unique as of yeah, being a producer for other bands. So you're getting to practice this skill set so that when yep. it's time for bearing point, then to create stuff like you have experience, you're not starting from square one in a sense, which I think is a really rare and yeah, valuable asset to a band. Yeah. And, uh, so a lot of the cool things about, uh, like recording bands is there's sometimes like it, they ask for help in a way that they don't ask for help. And yes. it's like, yes, please where it's, you're speaking to my soul. here. They're having like issues finishing it up mm-hmm. and you're like, maybe, you know, add this or we can do that. And that's when you turn kind of more into like a producer than like just a fucking guy that clicks <laughs> buttons, you know? And, uh, <laughs> I worked, this is not a flattering comparison, so I apologize in advance no, to friends who are listening. I used to work at summer camp for a while. That was like my my teenage job through, yeah, my early college years. Yep. And it's a similar thing to where you're watching a five-year-old who like can tie their shoes but isn't good at it yet. And you like watch them try to tie their shoes enough times and they're never going to ask you for help. But if you go, hey, do you need a, do you need a yeah. little assistance? They're like, oh yeah, I do. Yeah. And you tie it. It's a, almost the same thing with bands of like, it's rare that they come to me and go, we need help with an idea, yep. but it's very common. They go, well, we're thinking about this and we're thinking about this. And they say 10 things that are kind of related. And it's like, yep. okay, pause. Let me help you. Yeah. Streamline yeah. this. And you haven't explicitly said, help me, yep. but you have shown me that you need help and that you're willing to accept help. And I yeah. assume producing records is the same thing where they come in of like, yeah, I have 37 different riffs we could use, but how does this become a song? How do we get these things to flow cohesively and be one thing? Yeah, it's like that. It's like that, that dumb scene from the what was that the Notebook where it's like, "What do you want? <laughs> what do you want?" And it's, I don't know. And I'm like, but a lot of that stuff. I can tell is, you're married and I'm single because I've never seen the Notebook. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I this I, I've even seen the Notebook before. I'm it's just it's, it's <laughs> yeah. just one of those things that it, yeah you're eventually going to see it even mm-hmm. if you don't want to. So it's mm-hmm. going to happen. So get ready for that. Um, <laughs> so the uh, with like the new like recording a band and they like they're having it like it's not a, it's, it's not even an issue it's like a i think they need something to just kind of bring it together or mm-hmm. like there's like a specific things where sometimes like I'm, I'm watching a guitarist like play and and i'm like the way he's doing it i'm like i'm just like I'll take his hand and like slide it back down on the bridge a little bit so it like it like hums a little better mm-hmm. and i'm like you know hit it hit it like that you know like really make it like yeah. i don't know best way to like a girthy mean sound and i'm like do it like that, and then mm-hmm. th- it'll it'll bring it like the drop will sound heavier instead of playing it up so tight. So that's the weird part about our jobs. Where yeah, my job is technically to make a music video. Really, what my job is is to like enhance what you want to make in this thing. And yep. it's this bizarre balance of like yeah, it's a people business. Like as much as I'm trying to create the coolest thing, what I'm trying to do is like foster what is in your head and help you get what is in the head onto the screen. Yep. And that's a very different thing than making a music video. And I think that's writing a song is a similar thing of like. Yeah, they come to you to write a song, to produce a song, to mix and master the thing. And that's that's not moving your hand. That's a very different, like, human touch of, like, hey, let me help you here. Like, yeah. I know this isn't technically under the umbrella of my job description, but this is going to make the whole thing better here. Exactly. It makes it because my name's on it. Your yep. name's on it. We all can do a little better with and that. Doing it politely, too, is yeah. the other in a way that people are receptive to. Where I think, yeah, the common uh, knock on directors or producers is like they just want it to take control. So it's yeah. like, how do you tell them to move their right hand over to the, the pickups in a better yeah. way without doing it in an authoritarian dictator? Well, way? a lot of it is like uh, sometimes how I'll, I'll show someone is like, do it the way you want to do it. Mm-hmm. And then we'll do it again the way I said to do it. And then we A, B it. Mm-hmm. This is what you want. This is what it is. And I'm like, <laughs> and uh, so that's that's the best way to do it and then i have a couple clients that that are pretty they, they come back to me quite mm-hmm. often and i i think they understand that it's like i'm just you know it's not it's, it's not in like a like a dictator way or nothing like that yep. it's like i think this is you know i understand what kind of they're looking for and how to push them more in that direction yeah and i think that's why people come back to us more often and it's like i almost feel like it's a knock on my like directing or thing but it's like no it's how we made them feel in the process that is a much more yeah. like valuable and memorable part of the process to them than yep. the exact yeah, details of the recording and all that went like recordings kind of come and go in a sense like you're talking about the song from three years ago that you're already like Fuck that. I hate that song. But that isn't how relationships and people work, right? Nope. Like you would still look back at the people who were in the room with you when you wrote that and go, oh, they were awesome. That was a good time. Yep. Uh, and it's, yeah, trying to keep that in mind as we go of like, yeah, I want to I wanna make the coolest thing, but it has to be the coolest thing that overlaps with what you want to make also. And there's yeah. a very fine balance in that. Yep. Because uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it, they write a song and then I record it and, and all that stuff because right under 
the their writing credits is guess what the producer credits and mm-hmm. the recording credits and all that stuff. So my name's right next to fucking their name. So yes, it's like we kind of I I want them to sound as good as possible. Yes, because my name's gonna be on it too. And how I think that's been, what it is. How long have you been like producing bands? So like with the with like with the recording and all that, I don't really consider myself a producer, okay. but it's more of le- uh more like some people will kind of need a little help in that role or want some ideas that I can, I can help them out with. It doesn't happen that often. 99% of the times I'm, you know, just a recording engineer and all that, but you know, that 1% of the time I feel like I can actually help them. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, Oh, let's, let's do this. So I've been, I've been doing that. Um, not that long. Cause it's not, it's not my, you know, my full-time job. So there's a lot of people that like, they, they're like, you know what, if you do it, you got to just jump in it. You mm-hmm. got to just pray and jump. And I'm like, no, nah, I got a 40 hour uh, commitment that I can't really just, do that with so i just I, i've been slowly learning as i go and right now i feel like i'm at a i'm in a spot where it's like there's stuff that's coming out really good we got a new uh bearing point song that basically ready to go that i think we're gonna drop probably within the next like i'm gonna guess a few weeks hell so, yes i assume this is wes's debut as well on a track yeah hell yeah it'll be yeah i am eager to hear that yeah that was on my, oh, on my list sounds, of things to get oh, to it sounds really good so it, <laughs> i'm sure it, it does yeah, he oh, is yeah. <laughs> unbelievable yeah i was so impressed with your show the last whatever two weeks ago last week whenever yeah. the heck that was in bristol uh, uh, at the at uh, bleachers, bleachers yeah. yeah yeah he's just such a monster on stage just such a, a great stage presence that i think is yeah again going back to the people part it's like there's a lot of people who can scream but being entertaining while you're yeah. doing it is a whole different category of skill set that i yeah. think he knocks out of the park yeah he's he's a uh, he's very out out like uh what's the his emotions are very outward, like mm-hmm. that, and that that's what makes a vocalist great. Is because you're like that 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 I you can feel, see his you can yeah. see and and feel his attitude yeah at, at on stage and and that's that's awesome. It some people just can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I certainly won't. That's why I like being behind the camera because it's a lot yeah. easier part of me than being yeah that part of it. Uh, you mentioned that the yeah there's the forty hour week, there's the full time job, and then producing or recording mixing has been like the side project there. Uh, do you like that way? Do you like being able to do this like without the stress of an income or in a perfect world, would that be your income? Oh, in the perfect world, that would be my income. Okay. I would hate it every day, but I would love it. You know, it's one of those things where it's like uh, listening to a drummer that can't play to a click. Yep. It hurts me so much. It hurts <laughs> yeah. so bad. And then at the same time, it's like, then finally, like you, you're like, you, you slowly start watching them get it. And they're mm-hmm. like, and then they, they pick it up. And cause I only do, I, I record everything live, yep. so it's like I, I rarely ever do like MIDI drums and all that. Interesting. Other stuff. Okay, yeah. So a lot, I know a lot of like the, the new modern stuff is like they're like they load the MIDI file up into the computer. They're almost and we'll, everything is that. Yes. Yeah, and it's like I don't. I'll do it. I don't prefer it, but I'll do it. But I, I and it's it's weird too because like when you have like fake drums versus real drums, fake drums are just ready to go. There's like mm-hmm. almost nothing you really got to do to those to really kind of get them going. Yeah. But like real drums, it's like there's like noises everywhere there's like i in just in, in when i when i mic a live kit there's usually uh, probably 14 mics yep. and that's like a whole kit room mics everything and there's a lot to sift through to make a really good sounding drum kit yes and then as in as compared to just a midi file you just drag and drop yeah so that is a really unique luxury to having your like i feel like most people are recording from home because you can play a guitar anywhere you can mm-hmm. do vocals just about anywhere drums of course cannot be done everywhere yeah. but you have the luxury that yeah your recording space is attached to the practice space so you can play drums there yep. anytime you want uh, i assume that also means that there's noise bleeding in from other practice spaces and other challenges that it's not as bad as you think it is okay. so it's every once in a while like because we have a there's like a cover band that practice under practices under us and I don't I don't know where the hell they are or they they they're like 99% of the times they're very good. Okay. So it's like they're on point and then sometimes you're like what the hell is going on down there? But it's usually not uh they usually their schedule I think it's usually weekday nights. Okay. So like I usually don't do too much recording weekday nights cuz I work 40 hours, but like Saturday and Sunday it's usually relatively quiet down there. So it's even still like when you have a mic like this close to your face so, like, when I talk, you don't hear the fan on the other side of the room. You know what I mean? You just right. hear my voice. You don't really – you won't notice something like that unless I, like, compress the hell out of it. Or sure. But a lot of the times that's that's not going to happen. So. Interesting. Yeah, and that sounds like a really unique, like, trait to you and your production process of, like, yeah, you, you can do real drums, and you are yeah. excited to do them. I think most people that I've talked to are excited to move away from them because it is 14 mics and so much it's hassle to get done. It, it, it's a lot – it's hard, too. And then, like, you see a lot of, like, dumb memes online where it's like, my snare sounds like shit, <laughs> and it's like – 
I think they all sound like shit. All snares sound like shit, but it's how they fit in with what you're doing is is what's important. Yeah. So yeah, is mixing drums one of your favorite parts of the process? Is that something like it's the most rewarding because like you get a really good drum sound that's like it's like ninety percent of the track right mm -hmm. there because then guitar sounds are relatively easy. Mm -hmm. Vocals is the, if the vocalist is good, you're good. But if they're hard, <laughs> then it's work. But it's you know it's. That's the hardest part, probably, is live drums. Yes, live drums. Is That's hard. an interesting part you mentioned. That yes, not everyone is proficient at their instrument, which is something I run into as well. But like, I can still light a scene well, and there are times like uh, you mentioned, drummer not playing to a click, which is definitely something that challenges me. The one that sticks out in my brain more is drummers who feel like they're scared of their kit, where it's like they're hitting it and they're not really like hitting it; they're yeah. just kind of like playing it. Yeah, you like you like you. So you're like you're recording this video to a, a song, and it's like all recording, and it sounds heavy and huge, and they're like. Yes. Like Jesus fucking Christ. And dude. that's one that's where, like um, when you move their hand back. Do it like this. Do it the like this. challenge there to me, or I guess the, the saving grace there to me is like I can still light a scene well and do my job very well. And even though they're not great at their job, my job still goes well. Yeah. In your context, it's like if they're not proficient at their instrument, there's not a whole lot in the oh, recording no. process yeah. that you can do to save it. it. It's like, like it's it's, it's gotta sound good coming in. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Sounds it has to sound good coming in. For it to sound good coming out, yes, and then you you can you can do a lot of polishing on some stuff, mm -hmm. but that's at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's yeah. There's there's the uh, the best thing you can do if you're going to record is is learn to play to a click, guitar, drums, that's even vocals, recording vocals. It's, it's it's you should know how to do that. And granted, you don't need it. And a lot of stuff, a lot of bands don't even you know they they won't even record to a click. They'll do like live recordings mm -hmm. and all that stuff, but. That type of stuff is you have to be playing with a band for a long time. You have yeah. to understand each other's cues, a yes. lot of that stuff. But if you've have if you've been playing with the band for like less than ten years, yep. use the click. <laughs> <laughs> it's mind numbing to me how uncommon a click is sometimes. Yep. Uh, and yes, I'm always a big advocate of like make sure at least your drummer has the ears and we can all follow yep. him. But like, yeah, I understand we can't all have any ears across the board, but like at least let's try and keep him on time. Uh, I was recording with Vomit Fourth. I did a music video for them. Uh, and I get on set and their drummer goes, oh, yeah, we don't use a click. And I go, yep. we're using a click today because this is like <laughs> you guys are way too crazy. Yep. And the whole band kind of looked at me and was like, no, trust us. He doesn't need a click. Yep. And it's the one time in my life that I've been like, holy fuck, this guy yep. is a metronome. He is programmed to do it. Like, yes. I don't know. Some people how, are just like that. Yeah, it was my it was so impressive to me because they are such a fast and chaotic band that like I know Knox Loose doesn't use a, a click that often which to me kind of makes sense because yeah. they're just slowing everything down in real time and really yep. letting all the breakdowns breathe and like that makes sense to me but when we're getting to something like Vomit Forth where it's very technical and fast and quick it was like I, I am so shocked and impressed that like when I got back to my computer and had the footage that it all lined up perfectly it lined up, yeah. and was yeah I was just like I had to eat my words I was like yeah you guys yeah, are right good. I thought this was a terrible idea but like, nope you're right my bad <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. it was so shocking to me and yeah. I think yeah that but that's the thing is like we see that happen you know once out of every 10 times you know what I mean uh, yeah. where it's like nine times out of 10 <laughs> put the click on yes nine <laughs> Which, times out of 10 I'm yeah, right yeah we we don't we don't use a click live interesting we don't because it's the same thing you gotta let the breakdowns bleed, breathe sometimes it's like sometimes I want to go slow as shit and like I'm like it it's heavy time and <laughs> that's what's gonna happen yeah. and some I I probably freak out the band members sometimes <laughs> when I'm playing like if I think we have a video of violent justice from the palladium and usually the end of violent justice I'll I'll slow it down a little bit, and then we all slow it down together. I started off slow because it's just me playing, and I played it. I played it the regular way, and then for the second half of me by myself, I like halved it. I was like, surprise! <laughs> it's fucking heavy now. <laughs> and it, that, but that's the thing is, you lose that interaction with the crowd because the yeah. crowd was eating it up. Yeah, the crowd was eating it up. So I, I was like, fucking send someone to the hospital. Like, let's let's go. Like, yep. it's, and that's what it was. It was, it was an awesome time. And that's the weird part to me is like everything scales and you have a light show and it's like, well, your light show is yeah. programmed to the click so your click can't go away because then all of a sudden we're off time with everything else yep. happening here. And it's this weird, yeah, uh, described a velvet prison was the term I heard where it's like, yes, everything gets nicer but that almost becomes constricting in its own yep. way and you're constricted by luxury instead of being able to, yes, let things breathe. Yeah. Uh, that's where, yeah, someone like Knox Lose has always fascinated me by not using the click of like, it's incredible that you've made it to this like, yeah, this velocity, this, this size, yeah. this caliber and kept your own integrity and not said, okay, yeah. we're going to do this because it's how it should be done. Yeah. Yeah. And they should use a click probably like that uh, mathematically maybe, but like functionally, no functionally yeah. what they're doing is working perfectly. And that's the weird give and take with that because it's, uh, we 
are talking about in-ear monitors and stuff like that mm-hmm. and like maybe moving over to that but that's like a whole different it's like a whole different practice routine it's every it's like you change up everything to, yep. to get in that mode and yes it's, it's one of those things where it's like is it better for our style of music to do that and, and I, it's 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 and that's the thing is like since we're we, we're technically deathcore and like a lot of the times it's like yes when you're doing faster stuff you want that click and then sometimes when you when you just want to just watch people fight you you <laughs> turn off the click it, it's it's it, it's a weird give and take and I don't think there's a solid way to really do that yet yeah where we can uh, you know have the best of both worlds and. And I think the the other variable there is just the amount of gear and uh, like technical expertise that is required to have that. Where I'm yep. thinking of a friend's band here that did use all the in-ear stuff, and it was just it was always a nightmare. That was always the source of all the problems. Was yeah. one of the th- one of the receivers wasn't receiving. Someone's in-ear went out in the middle of the song, and like now all of a sudden you've created so many more problems than we need to have. And I think we were talking before the podcast of how like these mic stands annoy me and how they need to be replaced. And yep. my take on it is like, yes, I don't love them, but like replacing them isn't a benefit to the show. It's just a waste of money and I can waste money, but it doesn't make the show better. It's just like in my own head. And I think there's a similar thing here with the in-ears of like, there's a certain point where they will benefit you, but if all it does is introduce more stress and the yeah. audience doesn't benefit from that stress, yeah, then yeah, stop making life hard. Just do what works. Like the only benefit I could see that like the in-ear, like, you know, really working for us is like our like bass drops and stuff, having it, all that stuff automated. Yeah. Like we don't have to worry about, because sometimes like when, when you go into like a breakdown, you really want those two cymbal hits. Mm-hmm. Like you really want that like, doof, like yeah. both cymbal hits, but then say we have like a sample pad and it's like he's got to hit the sample pad mm-hmm. and it's it kind of you, you you kind of lose it it's like a weird give and take and i don't know it's uh, i'm still i'm still on team no click for yeah. live shows but, yeah yeah but recording click of course yes. shows, no <laughs> if money was unlimited would a click still be like would it sorry would a live show still be clickless if money was unlimited if we could afford all the in-ear monitors would you still prefer to go clickless i don't know i i, I think that's the thing is like I don't know about that because I really prefer having I like having that like raw control over mm-hmm. over the show. Yeah. And I think it that I mean it's also it's good for me, it's good for Wes. Mm-hmm. It's good for anybody who has like that a little section where they can shine. They can like really do it how they want to do it in that mm-hmm. moment in that feeling and you lose that with the click. Interesting. A yeah. live click. There is, yeah. It becomes sterile in a way that live shows I don't think should be, and especially not in our world of live yeah. show. Like, I don't think anyone comes to the Deathcore show because they need everything to be perfect. Like, we're at the Deathcore show because things aren't perfect. We yeah. want to celebrate that and live in that and feel that for a little bit. Well, like, what was it? I was, uh, I was watching, like, a might have been a Shade 45, like, uh, uh, interview. And, uh, Hell yeah. It was, I think they were, they, they were complaining about, like, a lot of like bigger rappers now are like SoundCloud rappers. They'll mm-hmm. they'll come on, they'll just press play on their song, yep. and then they'll just yell to their song. I'm like, that's bullshit. Yeah, you paid for a live show. You didn't play for a, a you know a, a sit in or like yeah. a listen to. You know, yeah. it's, and that that's the kind of stuff that you can't. There's, there's 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 no price on like a like a live live show. Yeah, it's, it's depends on the band, but yeah, and I think in the. Uh, this is where TikTok is a fascinating uh, extension of social media to me because as content has gotten more like more casual, everything is done through iPhone and everything on TikTok that does well is iPhone. Like my camera doesn't do as well on the, in, on TikTok specifically as like iPhone does. And I think it's a, a matter of degree of realism, right? Like when I film something with my iPhone, there is like physical characteristics of that camera where it's like the weight of the camera and how much my hand shakes it and the way that it looks is very relatable to us. Whereas my camera makes things not relatable right my camera is designed to make things look better than they are and like that's the goal there Uh, and i think with recording and with live music there's a similar thing of like we've gotten so so much content thrown at us that we're now craving things to be real again uh and that's where yeah this lack of click comes back in of like yeah people almost would prefer it to be imperfect because then it's real instead of having to be perfect and sterile and controlled in a way that isn't exciting anymore As long, and as long as like you're not seriously fucking up the set, uh, sure. <laughs> it, it's it, it, I don't know. It, I don't think it's I don't think it's a that important to run it perfect every time. I understand maybe if you're like a like a, like some sort of really technical band like Dream Theater or someone like that or like yeah. Between the Barrier to Me. Yeah. Like yeah, they should use clicks. As the time signature is changing every measure, <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. Well, that's 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 their bread and butter though. Their bread and butter is the same every time. Mm-hmm. That's it's different with that. Yeah. But, not you. <laughs> yeah, not me. Nope. 
<laughs> Hell yes. Uh, I want to go back to day one here. So we kind of got into the early production days. I'm curious where your music journey starts here. So yeah, are you six years old playing drums, playing guitar? Like, yeah, where's your first introduction into this weird musical world that we're the, in? The first time, like the first thing I've ever played, I was probably in fifth grade and I played saxophone. Okay. I played saxophone up until almost senior year of high school. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I did a lot of that. And, but when I, uh, it was like going into freshman year of high school, I had, uh, all, all my all my friends I hung out with are all like like scene kids like super you know <laughs> girl jeans everything oh yeah like, fucking the whoo, I remember it all man and uh, I, I wasn't really in that I was at that time I was, I was into metal I was I was into like older older metal and uh, was that from friends from family yeah where does where does your <laughs> yeah how do you get into this weird world that we're in like it was I it was they were like hey we need a guitar and I was like I guess I could fucking figure it out and then like so I ended up getting like a like a cheap guitar I forgot I don't even remember the the right. type of guitar it was <laughs> and I think it was from a pawn shop nice and I just started jamming uh, with with uh, it was, at the time it was my buddies Evan and Chris and uh, we sucked so bad <laughs> it was so fucking bad and we made a band and we ended up getting a bunch of older people in the air, in Bristol to to play with us and we were just all bad together. <laughs> And the fucking the band's name was uh, Garbage Bag Parachute. <laughs> Hell yeah! And it was like it was like heavy, heavy, low, low. Hell yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Garbage Bag Hell Parachute yeah. yep. is a top tier band name. That's oh, gotta be was, top five. I've heard. Fucking trash. And then the uh, we ended up changing the name because that name wasn't bad. So like that name wasn't good enough. So we <laughs> ended up changing it to For Those Still Breathing, which is not even that good either yeah and, that's very yeah for all those sleeping that's very much like of the times though in that era of, yeah, yeah. It, it was just like shitty album art it was mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> all of that was so bad and then uh any fun lowlights there of playing yeah in vfws and churches did you play any so that shows? was 2005 i want to say five it's a guess um but so 2005 we were playing our first show was actually at at the what? Uh, no, it was in Bristol at a. It was like an American Legion. I forgot which mm -hmm. one. It was like three in Bristol. Yeah, and, and we got all fucking drunk. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was a problem as a kid. And so we ended up like playing this weird American Legion, and we sucked, and we had fun sucking, and we ended up getting like liquor out of the cabinet <laughs> at the American Legion, and we just took it and and ran. And after the set, but that's. I don't. It was not a <laughs> Thank good Thank you for your service and your liquor. <laughs> yeah. They, well, they, they leave a whole liquor cabinet in the bathroom unlocked. I think that's going to be a problem. That's trouble. Yeah. When They're your asking, teenager is coming over. They yeah. wanted us to steal it. That's what happened. But so we did that. Uh, and then, uh, man, I'm trying to think of how that. And then our second show ever was It Dies Today at, at the Webster. With, okay. I want to say I, I killed the prom queen. I think I, I killed, the, uh, I killed mm -hmm. the prom queen, I think, was also on that. But I don't really remember that show that much. But mm -hmm. it was Is that because of the liquor from the first show? Oh, still? I don't know. I, I don't even remember if we played underground or main stage either, but we sucked so bad. <laughs> like thinking about it now, if I if I played that set now, I'd probably just kill myself. Did you <laughs> <laughs> Did you know you sucked? Or at the time oh, were you guys man. rock? Oh, stars? we were this is the best music <laughs> ever, man. We were in it. We were just we were just so in it and it was it was so fun. <laughs> As you should be, though. Yeah. This. Right after we were done with the band, like, and that, the band didn't last long either. It was like a year. It was, you know, just a, a blip, a mm -hmm. blip in your in your childhood. And right after it was over, I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> what the hell was that? And then I ended up playing, like, metalcore. Like, I, I was going to eventually, then I was going to, like, try out for, like, a like a metalcore band. Because mm -hmm. uh, around the time, it was like Antebellum was up, and they were looking for a second guitarist. So I was like... I could do that. I could play metalcore guitar because at the time that was like all I was listening to was like As I Lay Dying, Kill Switch Engage, all that stuff. I was like, yeah. fuck yeah. Yeah. I'll do this shit. And uh, I tried out with them and they were like, yeah, you're good enough. You can do it. I'm like, sure, I'll start doing that. And then like not even like a month later, they were like, I forgot who I was talking to, but it was it was one of the, the band members and we started talking about like death metal. And I was like, Death metal's cooler than metalcore, so we started doing that, and then the uh, half of the band didn't was like, no, death metal's gay, mm. or they, you know how kids talk back then. Yeah. We're not doing that; it's stupid. And I'm like, I'm like, well, we're gonna do it. Like, it's it just it is what it is. We mm -hmm. were like at that point, it was me, Billy, and Coleman. We were on board with the death metal. We're just gonna ride that train, and then so we did that. I got a couple of my friends from from Bristol to come, and and one ended up playing bass, and then one started doing vocals, 
And that's, we, I rode, we rode that for a long time. Is there like an identity crisis here? You mentioned that like saxophone is like the musical thing and you get into this deathcore world, which is the antithesis of saxophone. Yeah, I don't was know what there... the hell was up with that. It was like, it was, uh, choose an instrument when you were a kid. Yeah. Did you like, did you love saxophone or was it just what you did? I think it was just what I did. Okay. Okay. And okay. I, I did it for so long. It yeah. Was, it, it, it was one of those things where it's like, well, I'm getting a, like a credit for this in high school. So yeah, I, I played cello for the same reason. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, but, um, yeah. I'm sure like, you know, you know, you're almost done with high school and you're like, oh, man. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> yes, exactly that. Uh, my favorite version of that story is, uh, Yes, I'll come back to the saxophone thing in a second. My cello story is that uh, our somewhere at the end of middle school, we get like new. Uh, I didn't play into high school. I stopped in middle school. In my eighth grade year of middle school, uh, we get new bows uh, yeah. as like the whole class. And of course, you have to put rosin on the bow so that the rosin like grabs the string. That's what vibrates and makes the yep. noise. I just never put rosin on my bow. So the whole year I played <laughs> and didn't make a single sound, oh, man. but it was beautiful. It was like everything I wanted. I'm like, yeah, I get to go get my credit. I don't have to worry about anything. If anyone's out of tune, it's definitely not me. Not no you. one can hear me. Nope. Unless you had to pluck it or I, I don't really, yeah. I don't remember how big. Yeah. Were. No, I, I didn't know much more than you do probably, oh, but I remember knowing enough not to put rosin on my bow and oh, yeah. being like mad scientist about it. I'm like, it's oh, like, I figured it out. Yeah, it's this like, is it. It's like that Homer Simpson meme where he just sucks back into the fucking <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm playing. <laughs> yes. Um, does saxophone then like become your basis? Like, do you have a, like a music theory background that helps now as you're producing I, music? I have some. Uh, and I took a bunch of music classes in, in high school too. And okay. I did like music theory one, two, three. Or I don't know if it was three or AP. I forgot mm -hmm. what they called it. But I have a lot of uh, theory, knowledge in music, but I rarely ever use it because the type of music I play, it's just like, who, fuck, who cares? <laughs> who cares? I'm just going to chug and we're going to have a good time. And, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's what that is. Interesting. Basically. So I, I'll bust it out every once in a while when I, and I, when I really need like a good like like a good harmony or like if I'm thinking of like a solo or something like that, how to kind of really tie everything together. Sometimes mm -hmm. I think about it, but it, it's very rare. Do you have any interest in like writing in like orchestral parts or like symphonic parts behind the songs? Like it sounds almost like a different genre and different thing, but it is, yeah, the Lorna Shores of the world are, yes. are doing that. So what's funny about that is we, I, so I follow their, uh, the recording engineer who did all the Lorna Shores stuff, Josh Rader. Okay. And uh, like I, I watch all of his stuff. I love his recordings. I can't stand Lorna Shores. Music. Interesting. I can't, it's, it's too, it's, it's not enough band forward. Okay. There is so yeah. much other stuff going on. Yep. And Schrader has a lot of uh like credits towards that. Like he helped produce that whole thing. And it was I I personally couldn't do that. I mean, I, I probably could, but it would probably take years. Yeah. It'd probably take years to really tie in all that kind of stuff together. Yeah. And all the stuff that he added in the band and all that all that stuff. And I mean, I gotta give him credit for that, but that's not I I don't like that. I'm not a big fan of you know orchestral stuff. Okay, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you even like, the, like so. Have you ever listened to Behemoth? Um, uh, barely. It's like, it's like a. It's kind of on. It's not. It, if I say it's on par with Lorner Shore, people are gonna be like, "No, the fuck, it's not," because <laughs> it's it's Behemoth. And, yeah. Uh, they have a lot of like orchestral stuff, and but they still are very band forward, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I would rather prefer. Okay, where it's like it's nice as like a, it's nice as a flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not nice as like a, it's like getting a mouthful of ketchup when you buy your burger. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, sure. To me, yeah. that that's what it's like, and it's. I, I want the meat. If, I, if I'm buying a burger, I want the meat. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to be beating people up more yeah. than making people feel <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Hell yes. And then when does the music start to get more like serious for you? So we're in high school. We're in this band. We're yeah, starting to do okay. We're getting to the deathcore world and finding that as like your identity. Yeah, that, that's basically what it was. Is I we I probably played with at, at the time that that band's name was Beneath the Gallows, and we played a lot of shows. A, a crazy amount of shows and that was at the same time like the other guitarist in bearing point was he was in forsaken this guy or forsaken i forgot what their name was at that time but there was there was always like some weird dumb little it was a competition and it was stupid because yeah. some some of the members took it seriously and some didn't give a shit like mm -hmm. i don't I didn't really care but it was like it, it was that type of competition, I think, really helped us. And I know I, I see a lot of posts mm -hmm. on, on Facebook, too, where it's, people are like, oh, you know, stop being you know so competitive with other bands. But how the fuck are you going to get better? Yep. Or how are you going to try to 
be better if you don't have something to you need a bar to jump over. You yes. know what I mean? I relate you to that, that so much. You need it. I grew up an athlete, and of course, sports are inherently competitive. There's no way to play sports and nope. not compete. That is how they work. And then I got into the music thing as I got older, and all of a sudden, it's like, don't compete. Competition's bad. And it was such like a, a, a clash to me of like, no, no, no. Competition's good. Com- yeah. Like, iron sharpens iron. This is how yeah. we're going to get better. But there is such a fine line of like, we can't be competing against other bands in a way that like, there's a winner and loser. It has to be competitive yeah. of like, we're both winning together. And it's a very bizarre thing to try and quantify to me. Yeah. I think I think all that all, all the competition is good. The only thing like you really shouldn't do as far as competition is you can't you can't just shit on another person. Yeah. I yeah. think outside of that, as long as you're not trying to build yourself up by really just chopping them down at their knees, you can't. Mm-hmm. That's the everything else is fine. It, you know, it's yeah. you know, we'll play a show together, see who, you know, sold the most merch, you know, see who is who's freaking out hardest during whatever set. Mm-hmm. That's important. Yeah. It's it's important to me. Yeah, I know it sounds dumb and it might be a little childish, but it's. I don't care. I want I want the fans to like me more than they like you. And it's not like a mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing. It's not like you, you suck. It's like I yeah. want to be better than you. Yes, that's what that is. And yeah. I think that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And I think we need that. And I think I've I've had to really work on myself to like make sure I'm competing against me and recognizing that yep. like my journey is so unique. Like yeah, whatever anyone else is making is like I don't know. Yeah, in the context of a music video, it's like there are music videos that are better than mine. How much money did they have in the production? Yep. There's one huge question of like, in a day to remember music video is better than mine. They also had $100,000 to spend on it. Yeah, so, like, it's apples like, and oranges. You, you here. can't really compete with something like that. Yeah. You know? And of course, that is true on a smaller scale as well. Like, yeah, different local bands are going to spend different amounts on their product. And my job is to take whatever you give me and make the best out of that yeah. in the best circumstances, right? And sometimes, as in the context of music videos, sometimes people have access to a space that is like, Oh, yeah, that is the perfect thing. If you live on a lake, it's like, oh, yeah, you can film on a lake. Whereas for me, it's like, how do I rent a lake out to go film? And there's so many independent variables where, yeah, I've had to really work on looking and making sure I'm competing with myself because my journey is the only one that is, like, applicable to what I'm doing. Yeah. And, yeah, everyone else is like, yeah, if you put $100,000 into this thing that if I'm competing with you, I'm going to lose every time. And that's my fault. (laughs) Like, that's on me for thinking that these are equivalent. So you're telling me you don't want to take out a (laughs) $100,000 loan? (laughs) I'm interested in it. Uh, there was a, a guy I met years ago, uh, and we were both like in stage one, uh, 2016, 2017, 2018. We're both like in our very, very early days of this thing. And at the time, my camera is probably a $300 camera with a $50 lens or something. Yep. Yeah, less than $500 total. This guy went out and he pot- purchased like a, a red camera, which is like a cinema high end, like movie yep. camera. And these things are like 50 grand, 100 grand, something like yep. that. And at the time, I remember talking to him and kind of like, I didn't know him well and kind of politely being like, why the fuck did yeah, you do that? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's and, that? Yeah, I'm sure I said it. Yeah, yeah, I was much more like, oh, that's cool. You know, what inspired you to buy it was yeah. probably how I worded yeah. it or something. And his uh, analogy at the time was like, it's kind of like a face tattoo of like, now that I have this thing, all I can do is succeed. Like, all I have to do is yeah. run this path. Yep. And I always, I, I don't remember his name. I don't remember anything about him. But to this day, I'm curious of like, if that worked, he is a bajillionaire right now. Like, that went perfect right. for him. If it failed, then he has a hundred thousand dollar debt. Yeah, it's that sitting never in his fucking paid. attic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and he's still paying it off to this day. Yeah, uh, and it's always a fascinating one to me. Of like, yeah, there is some crazy artist that has to be here. We have to take some chances, but taking those chances in a calculated way is also a very oh, yeah, fine. No, I'm game not going to lose my house, you know. No, buying a fucking studio. It's not but happening. in theory, <laughs> in theory, some people need that push, though. Some people really do. Yes, and if you have a studio that nice, then the next time. Lorna Shore wants to record or whatever. If they are in the area, they would go, oh, let's just rent out your studio. Yep. And now you're making money off of the thing. And it's like, yeah, there's a world where selling your house for the studio is the best business choice here. Yep. But I don't have the balls to make that business nah, choice. I mean, I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, with, so like with uh, like like recording and probably music videos and stuff, there's like pro- uh, we were I was talking about this not that long ago either. There's, there's like a certain level you hit where everything after that is just, it's like to taste. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yep. it's, that's, that's, I feel like I'm getting close to that at this point now where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, like I listened to recordings I did like three years ago. And I'm like, fuck, mm-hmm. throw it out. I don't want it. Yes. And then now I'm listening to stuff. Now I'm like, oh, you can actually hear everything fine. Mm-hmm. It's heavy. It kicks, it pumps, all yep. that stuff. And I think, uh, I think it's probably the same thing with say like, Music video shooting. I once you get to With a certain point, yeah. My, once yes. you get to a certain point, it's just kind of like, 
what you think should go and, and mm -hmm. how to edit things properly. And yeah, in the last year or two, I've had that like deep breath of like, oh, I don't need a better camera anymore. That's yeah. beautiful. And not like that you're, you're seeing it. You're like, oh, yes. Yep. And not that my camera is the top of the line one, but it's at a place where it's like, yes, it is doing everything I need it to do. It is as high end as I need it to do. And everything from here is how I make it better. But like, there was yeah there's a lot of it where it's like in shooting concerts or photographing concerts like concerts are by nature poorly lit and what i mean by that is like cameras like sunlight like they want to be outside in a park taking a photo of a dog they don't want to be in a dark room with flashing strobes that are all crazy colors like that isn't what a camera is designed to do yeah. so for a while as you're getting in there is like a people are always like gear doesn't matter and that annoys the fuck out of me because like no gear does matter that's why i paid for my gear yep uh, and especially in the context of a concert where it's so unflattering and so yeah uh, not what the camera wants to do that yes the gear matters more than ever i would argue in that circumstance yep. than it does outside and finally it was like oh i'm at a place now where yeah that isn't the thing anymore now it's lighting is my next big thing and yep. yeah like these are something to replace and upgrade but it's like that is the next frontier of this thing to me and that's been a very like satisfying like deep breath of like okay yep. I, I did it and there are plenty of cameras that cost more than mine and i would yep. love to have one of them but it like doesn't feel like it's the the bottleneck anymore well it's gonna it, eventually it's gonna get to the point where it's you know cameras are so good that your eyes can't even tell the difference mm -hmm. we're like we're, we're, so i forgot what the actual they they there's an actual definition mm -hmm. limit where it's like your brain like you can't physically see any better than that yep so we're getting to that point where it's pretty soon cameras just it's going to be cameras that's it yes so. and the <laughs> the more modern uh the current iteration of that is like we have like 4k and 8k and all these things yep. and it's like we have cameras that are producing stuff that TVs can't play. And even if TVs could play them, they'd have to be like a movie theater size screen for anyone to care. Yeah. <laughs> That's why, speaking of movie theater size screen, like we had, when Dune, Tune came, uh, Dune mm -hmm. 2 came out, my, my, my buddy was like convincing me where it's like, you need to see it in IMAX because I guess the whole movie was shot in IMAX. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't fucking care. Is it a good movie? Yep. What's the storyline? I have now I got to watch Dune 1 <laughs> and figure out what the hell's going on with this. Yep. And then we ended up watching it and it it looked amazing. Like, mm -hmm. but it, cause it was shot specifically for that and, and all that. But IMAX seats suck. And yep. I will take the recliner every time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, Oppenheimer is the other big, big version of that where everyone... Yep. Uh, and there's also a weird... Yeah, this is camera nerd stuff that I think probably I care about more than anyone else. But there's a weird like class here where we can restore film up to like 8K or something. Yep. Like we can make film cameras look good. But ca digital cameras from the 2000s, we can't make look good anymore. Yeah, because there's uh, no information in that. And there's a, so there's a weird thing where in 50 years, stuff will look better from 100 years ago than from 50 years ago because they'll be able to upscale the old yeah. vintage stuff and the stuff that was shot digitally will not be able to upscale and grow. So there's this weird like... Yeah, whatever is good now might not even be future proof, which is a weird idea to like yeah. spend a bajillion dollars on a camera that is not future proof and is going to be outdated in 20, 30 years. Um, but neither neither here nor there. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, um, high school band happens. We <laughs> get run into <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, where does Bearing Point get go in there in this whole equation? Uh, I well, so after high school, ha high, high school band it was, uh, beneath the gallows. We I was in beneath the gallows for a while, um, basically the whole run of it, and uh, after that. I didn't really play nothing for a while. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of like, I've been in a band for the last like five years. My, maybe I just might just go fuck off and do what a kid does. Yeah. And uh, I ended up starting up this uh, weird little, it wasn't like a hardcore project, but it was uh, it was more along the lines of like the chariot style mm -hmm. stuff, but kind of more hardcore focused. And that, that was called Glass House. And that, that was fun. That was just me writing and buddies in the band and all that stuff. And that was good for a while. And then, I don't even know what exactly happened, but I think you life happens. Grow, yeah. You go up, and then you're like, hey, I can't do that. And then nothing happens for a while after that, man. Nothing. And then I get, uh, I get, you know, notification on Facebook from fucking uh, Josh Boucher, and it's like, start a band, blah blah blah. Or someone wanted to sell their gear, or, mm -hmm. or and then our other guitarist wanted to buy gear or something. It was it was something dumb like that. And then it was like, go. Jam, jam with me and then I got tagged in a thing and I was like sure I mean at the time I just I started getting into recording so it was like I had the studio mm -hmm. like the studio was there it was available for practice spacing and uh, that was it it was just like let's all be in a band together I'm like sure fuck it <laughs> at this point it's you know life I mean so much has already happened I was like I was like well I'm like you know like married now this is yeah. like different because like it was it, it was Probably 
trying to think of how many years it was. It was probably like five or six years of just, I was working on myself. That's yeah. basically what yeah, that yeah, was. Yeah. I went to tech school, got an electrical license and well, not a license, but you learn it and then you get the job and then mm-hmm. you, you work for a while and then get the license. And that's what happened to me. I was like working on that, doing that, trying to be an adult. And then here comes the band. <laughs> here comes the band. Trying oh, to derail yeah. your momentum. Oh, hell yeah. No, you know what? I let it a little bit. So it's 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 too much fun not to yeah. not to do that. I guess to a certain point where like there's things that you know you feel you should be doing. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's what it is. Even though it's like, you know, it's not really can it doesn't really help my life that much, but <laughs> sure. it makes me feel good in a way that, you know, so there's some stuff it, that you know, it, it it you feel fulfilled doing it. Yep. And that's and that's what it is. It's it's one of those things. Uh, yes. Everyone needs a hobby, everyone needs a passion project to work in. And yeah, I think it's unfortunate that ours feels so expensive and time yeah. consuming and difficult where it's like uh yeah if i liked playing frisbee like my life would be a lot simpler than yeah. if i like making music videos yeah. no i know it's it, stuff like that is just it's one of those things that you know you like you like doing what you like doing and that's sometimes you can't do anything about it yeah and it's you got to do it you got to do it if you want to feel good about doing it so yep yeah. Um, hell yes, dude. As we get towards our hour here, uh, one thing I like to wrap up on is like something that you're currently learning. So in the context of producing, the context of mixing, in the context of writing songs, like is there is there something that you're currently looking into that you're currently in doing the YouTube deep dive of how to get better at this thing? Like, oh, man. yeah, what's something there's, that you've been like fixated on improving lately? There's so many different things to learn when it comes to recording because yep. when you think about it, it's just sounds. Yep. So there's a lot of fucking sounds out there and and how to make those sounds is there's a lot of different ways to do that where it's uh it's there's nine different ways to do it Mm -hmm. and there's no best way to do it yeah and that's the thing is like you there's so many things that i don't uh, there's still things that i don't know that you could even do that that exists that sometimes every, every once in a while i'll find out like oh that's how that was done or like the the video will come up and like so, you ever listen to the band Tala? Uh, yes, actually, yeah, they're from Florida. Yeah, so yeah. I don't, I don't really listen to Tala. Well, I, I, that's what I was saying before. I was, I follow Josh Schrader mm-hmm. on, on Facebook, and every once in a while he'll post a video uh, or like how oh, how I did this, and they got this real big like cracky like snare drum sound, and I went through this huge deep dive on like how the like how it sounded like that because the snare the snare sounded awesome, and he ended up like going through and like miking the snare drum like normal like he would record it straight to your computer but he has it he actually also has a live mic on it and it gets bounced out to uh, a live speaker like how they would in like monitor it, like in a house in a house system and then he has that mic he has the house speaker's mic so it's like super ringy and massive and it was like who would have fucking thought to do that that's Be like weird. you want it to sound massive make it massive and it's like some that's the kind of stuff where it's like you th- you can't learn that. You just have to just figure it out. You'd be like, I'm going to make a big snare, and then you, I'll mic it through my speakers. It, that's the kind of stuff that sometimes being creative is more important than uh, you know, kind of knowing that's a, knowing things. That's a great point. I always think of audio recording as being very technical. And as we were yeah. talking about miking a drum, it's like there is absolutely a right and a wrong place to put the mic on the snare drum. Yep. If you mic, yeah. A, yeah, if you mic the side of the snare drum, it's going to sound like shit. You have to mic the faces, and I know you mic underneath is the other common yeah, trick so you, that I see. You, you, you can mic the snares underneath, but you don't want to get too close or else yeah. it sounds weird. And then so you have like, say like this is like your snare drum. If you're if you're farther away, the snare sounds bigger, but if also if the mic is pointed towards the rim, you're going to have more of that like ping sound. Yeah. So there's like a there's like a spot. There's like and that's it's different for every type of music. Mm-hmm. So some you know, you don't want like some grindcore snare on like a fucking alternative rock song. Yeah, you don't yeah, want yeah. that. So there's like there's ways to do it where it's like that's the stuff that, you know, you can learn how to do. And, yeah. But that's math some, to me in a way yeah, that's figure outable and like I, I appreciate that that it's fixed, that there is like technical. a right and a wrong and yeah. like right and wrong is subjective, but there is like yes, these are the this is the angle of microphone that we were talking about. If yep. we go five degrees this way or five degrees that way, it's different. And that is a whole different category of skills than, yeah, <laughs> think, thinking to run your snare through a fucking PA yeah. system and then miking that up. Yeah, like, the, and that's the, that's the kind of stuff that I wanna, I wanna be so confident in my skills of what I'm doing where mm-hmm. I can start fucking off like that and yeah. being like, this sounds sick. And a lot of the times, that kind of stuff, it, it, some a lot of that stuff pays off. Like sometimes yeah. it's you get such a different sound that you really stick out in in a 
it like you you don't sound like anybody else because you got this crazy mm-hmm. fucking snare drum. It's not like you know the Saint Anger snare drum where it's like everybody shit talks that thing, <laughs> even though it's not that bad. But yeah. it's you know it's that's one of those things where you have a good snare or a good snare sound, people will be like, damn, that sounds awesome. Yep. And there's not enough you can pay for that. And it, it's an interesting thing. We started the conversation talking about how like our we should be like a a combination of all of our interests and yep. like just trying to be one thing isn't the best way to do it. And this is yep. to me the perfect example yep. of it. Of like just trying to mic a snare drum the right way isn't the best snare sound. The best yeah. snare sound is getting creative, going, okay, here's what I put the mics in the right place. This is good. Now what? Now how do we yeah. get this towards where we want to go? And yeah, yeah. It's, sometimes you have a sound where it's like it's. It sounds good and it sounds fine, but you need something fucking over the top. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to think crazy over the top on some on some sounds where Yeah. He was also talking about how sometimes that that they want such a big like you know, you know a st- like a snare smacking sound where they'll have like guys like run across the room and try to smack <laughs> a, a snare with a like a mic snare with a stick. And it's like some well that's the thing is a lot of the times on like on like death course stuff like that, you need something it needs to be over the top. It yep. has to it has to fit like or else it's going to sound weird. Yeah. Not even you, weird, but it it's not going to sound as good as it could. Sure. Have you been able to implement this like yeah, miking the speaker up for your snare? Is that something that you like saw in the pipe dream? Have you been able to use it in studio yet? So we have like I mean we have a PA system that I probably could do that with. I haven't done it just because I haven't really had the need for that yet. <laughs> some, yeah. Like you'll, time in a place. You'll yeah. know when you need something like that because yeah. you'll be like I need something over the top here or yep. something needs to fit here where it's like I, I, like it's 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 hard to think out of the box mm-hmm. when when I, well I feel like I'm still learning everything in the box. I can't yep. get out of the box yet until, yep. you know, I, until I'm confident with being in the box. Yeah, there's also this yep. weird thing of like yeah, you got to learn the rules before you break them, and breaking them is the fun part, but if you can't follow in the first place, yep. then you're just making a mess when you try and break them. Yeah, I have to be, you know, really gotta you gotta work to be able to break them because yeah. then say you might have to tweak something else somewhere else for that to even work in the beginning the, yep. in the beginning but if you don't know that then you're gonna spend you know four hours fucking something up real bad so <laughs> which is so tempting and, I, and, and the video editing thing it's like i spent so much time early on learning effects and making things look cool mm-hmm. and as i got in it's like oh no 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 go mm-hmm. back to square one it's like make a fundamentally sound thing that without effects is already cool yep and then you use the effects to make this thing even better but i would yeah go in on day one of like, how do I make the most glitched up looking thing? And it's like, you're missing the point here, kid. Yep. Like it, it'll look cool to your amateur eye, but in the context of making it a sustainable and like, yeah, timeless piece, it's like, no, do the basics well and then do this thing. Yeah. And it, it's that, that's why it's like, yeah. And it also kind of sucks too, you know, doing, doing the 40 hour job because yeah. I, I would love to just sit there and just, just work on this stuff and yeah. like be more confident and like, the knowledge that I have towards things. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's just not like that. You know, yeah. sometimes it's just like, I, you know, I record my bands and my friends that need some help and, you know, I'm not trying to kill them with money. You know, I'm not gonna yeah. be like, you know, $4,000, <laughs> you know, or, or leave me alone. It, it's like, you know, it's, I, I can, whatever you got, man, yeah. I'll, I'll help you out. Cause you're helping me out. I yep. get to learn how to do some more stuff. You get a good recording out of it. Everybody's happy. I wonder if it almost makes it more fun for you even because then you have all week looking forward to like, oh, Saturday, I get to do this thing instead of waking up Monday at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m., whatever the fuck time Monday usually starts for you and yeah. going, I got to go figure out that snare. What, what's, well, what's, what's funny about that, too, is like when you think of a band and you, you think about the music they have recorded, when they're coming up to you to record something, it's usually something they haven't recorded yet. Mm-hmm. So it's new. You get to hear something. It, you're the first one that gets to put ears on something and mm-hmm. be like, how do how do we make this better? Yeah, and how do we make this sound as good as possible? Hell yeah! So that's that's the fun part for me is like you hear like we record the you know uh, just a scratch guitar track, so you don't really get any information out of that. And then now that that's all scratched up and and to the click track and everything, now it's the drummer's turn. You record the whole kit, so now you're getting an idea how the song's coming along. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after this, it depends. Some people go bass first after that. Some people go guitars. I like going guitars because I'm a guitarist, so <laughs> sure. the bassist can wait. <laughs> and um, so then you get the guitars in, and you hear the rhythm tracks and all that stuff, and then there's leads. And then and then this is why I like going bass next because the bass, when you record the bass, in, in the if everything is good and everything's all recorded, once you get the bass in there, it's just like a thick, everything's just like, it, it's almost like, Oh, that's what it was missing. And you hear the bass so much more when it's the last thing you do that 
interesting. It, it, it makes it, you don't realize how much of guitar tone is bass mm -hmm. until it's, Without, you hear it, at, yeah. At, yeah, until you hear it. Like if you just got rid of the bass and a lot of stuff, you'd be like, this is fucking garbage. I feel like I don't hear the bass that much and it's probably exactly that, that I hear a guitar and yep. I just, yeah, intertwine those two yep. in my brain and haven't had enough, enough experience and expertise to separate yep. those sounds and realize, yeah, what, who's in the lifting there. Yeah, when a guitar and bass are mixed properly together, it's it's hard to tell the difference between what's what. I mean, obviously the whoom part is the bass, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's subtle. And a, as, as they should sound like one thing. Interesting, altogether. yeah. All together. Highly yes, my man. We did it. Episode yeah, 71, Kanan. Uh, we got a bunch of shows coming up. We got a bunch of Bearing Point merch out. Yes. Uh, so the show dates uh, coming up. Yes. Uh, July 6th in Allentown, PA. July 27th in Gloucester, Rhode Island. And August 10th in Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, where can people follow you online? Where do they get merch? Uh, I know you're wearing one of the cool shirts that I have been oh, wearing I'm, as well. I think I, I was wearing it last week, I hope, I think. This is like uh, my favorite shirt. It rules. Yes. It, it, and the back is awesome. <laughs> Shout out. Yes. Yeah. Our model. Shout out uh, Interloper Designs. Hell yes. He, he killed it. We also have a, a sick design that I don't know if... You've seen it, but it's the yard goats one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he like we, it's it's not a rip off, but it's like a Baphomet mm -hmm. yard go, and it's got it's Hartford bearing point. It's an awesome shirt too. It's so sick as hell. Yes. Yeah. Where do people go to buy that? Where can they find it? So online? we right now we we just sell it at our shows. Oh hell yeah! We okay. like to, but we're talk. We've been talking about you know starting on like an online store just mm -hmm. so we can you know pump out some more stuff that way because we usually do pretty well in, in merch stuff. Because hell yeah. I don't know. So far, we've been knocking it out of the park with these things. So, Hell yes. you, know, you know, shout out to Interloper for actually making those designs for us because those were awesome. That's awesome. Yes, they yeah. all look great. Yes, yeah. so I guess get to one of these dates, get to one of those shows, and see them. Uh, where can they follow you guys online? What's yeah, Instagram, Facebook? What's the best place to keep up with Bearing Point? Oh, the best place to keep up with Bearing Point is probably the Facebook page. With Hell the, yes. I think it's just Bearing Point CT. Fire, and you could see that there. You know, it's the only person, the only picture you're going to see with like a dead looking thing <laughs> uh, in, in the front of it. So it's uh. <laughs> Yeah, that's the best place. Sick. And all those links will be in the description, comment, yeah, whatever the fuck yep. bullshit here. Uh, where do people contact you to get recording done? If someone's interested, if they listen to this and want you to be the guy, yeah, where do they reach out to Oh, you? yeah. it's I, I mean, I got a weird spelling for my name, but uh, if they can, you can track me down on Facebook. <laughs> I'm the only one on Facebook. Yep. So if you find Kane and Billy on Facebook, it's me. I I have the same <laughs> issue of like, I love that once you know my name, there's no way you forget it. You're not going to. I'm the only one. You're not going to be like, oh, I added the wrong Kane. And <laughs> yeah. There yeah. was actually a country singer named Kanan Smith. That okay. I was friends with him on Facebook because he was the only other Kanan <laughs> on Facebook at the time. And now he's like some famous fucking country star. Oh, damn. Like yeah. ass asshole. I watched him grow up from nothing <laughs> just being your dumb name friend on Facebook. <laughs> Hell yes. yeah. <laughs> Shout yeah, out yeah. that guy. He'll be yeah. on next week. Yeah, yeah. Kane <laughs> Smith next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is my gateway to Kane and Smith. Yeah, yeah. Hell yes, my man. Episode 71 from everyone. We did it. Thanks awesome. for listening. Uh, I guess, yeah, leave a comment, leave a like, whatever the fuck dumb bullshit. It helps. Have fun. Have a beautiful day. Yeah.